let's just jump right into it because there's an issue we care a lot about that uh, is the big one on the horizon. I'm talking about ESG here. Yes. Woke Wall Street. Uh, tell us what you will do as president to stop ESG and just what of a threat that is to our country. Sure, and Brennan, I appreciate that question. This has been one of the areas where I've been most focused in my career in the last three years. Not just writing two books about it, but starting my most recent company, Strive, to stand up to the likes of BlackRock and State Street and Vanguard that have been pushing these ideologies. So here's the issue. Environmental, social, and governance factors. It sounds pretty good on paper. In practice, what does it mean? They're using our money. Every one of our money, retirees, investors, etc., to vote in corporate America's boardrooms to tell them to adopt racial equity audits or climate emissions caps that most of us never supported or voted for, and most importantly, that do not advance our best financial interests. That is a breach of fiduciary duty. It makes our companies less successful, it constrains our economy. But perhaps most importantly of all, what they're really doing is using financial firms to do through the back door what government could not get done through the front door under the Constitution. That is a threat to re religious liberty. It is a threat to liberty of every kind in this country. And I believe, Brenna, to be honest with you, some solutions have to be delivered through the market. So. I actually started Strive in my capacity not as a politician or a presidential candidate, but as an entrepreneur. I've built multi-billion dollar businesses. I said, this is our chance to create a competitor to the likes of BlackRock by instead offering options that tell companies not to focus on progressive politics, but to go back to focusing on products for customers and profits for shareholders without apologizing for it. That's what I did. We've had immense success doing it, over a billion dollars in assets under management within a year. But there is a role for the U.S. president to play as well. The Biden administration has changed the Department of Labor rules just in the last year to say that retirement fund managers no longer have to just maximize the value of your retirement account, but now have to look after climate change and other social agendas. So I will rescind those rules and restore the basic rules of the road in this country, make true capitalism what it was in the first place, the best known system to lift people up from poverty. I do think, Brennan, it will take a president who is not just reciting slogans we memorized in 1980 about big government, because this is about the hybrid of big government and big business and big banks, to together do what neither one could do alone. And I think that's one of the unique challenges we face today, and I think it will take a new generation that's actually knowledgeable about these challenges to address it. I think that's why it's such an important topic. And I applaud you for being among those attorneys general across this country at the state level who has actually been attuned to this, as many have been asleep at the switch. I want to congratulate you and a handful of other attorneys general that have actually properly focused on this issue. I'm proud of you for it, and we're grateful. Thank you, and thank you for your leadership on this issue because you sounded the alarms before anybody saw this issue coming. So thank you for that. Thank you, I appreciate that. Now, I know that the, the woke policy agenda is something that you are fighting, and a lot of the parents and grandparents in this room are also concerned about that. What can you do as president to push back and fight back? So I think there's two sides to the job. One is there are policies the U.S. president should stand for. And where I begin is not what I need to ask Congress to do. Most of those promises are never fulfilled. Repeal and replace Obamacare. You might remember that, it didn't happen. It's not anyone's fault, it's just Congress is designed to act slowly, if at all. One of the things I need to do is, as US President, enforce the civil rights laws as they exist on the books. I wrote a book about this. I think that modern wokeness reflects a sort of religion in this country, actually. Certain words you can't say, clothes you can't wear, apologies you must recite, excommunication procedures that must be initiated. Well, one of the things is the Supreme Court's been clear that even secular humanism meets the test for what counts as a religion. If that does, wokeism does too. Well, it turns out the religion prong of the civil rights statutes say that you can't force an employee to bow down to your religion. Well, if wokeness meets the Supreme Court's test for what counts as a religion, 
then that, what we're seeing across this country is actually a civil rights violation, where ordinary Americans should not be forced to choose between speaking their minds freely and putting food on the dinner table, between the American dream and the First Amendment. We're the nation on earth where you get to enjoy both of those things at the same time. That's what it means to be an American. And that, in many ways, is a violation under current law already. So I'll instruct the Department of Justice to enforce all civil rights laws even-handedly rather than in a one-sided way. I will say the other thing, though, and I think this is even more important, the U.S. president is more than a binder of policies, and I think we forget that sometimes. I think the U.S. president sets an example of what is possible in this country. My parents came here with no money 40 years ago. I have gone on to found multi-billion dollar companies. If I take office, I'll be doing it, if you all put me there at the age of 39, setting an example of what is possible for every kid in this country, regardless of their skin color, regardless of where their parents came from, regardless of how long their last name is. This is the United States of America where you get ahead with your own hard work, your own commitment, your own dedication, and that you're free to speak your mind at every step of the way. That is what it means to be an American. And the standard that I want you all to hold me to, if you put us in that position, is I want to be able to, you know the two sons that we just put to bed before we came here? I want to be able to look my two sons in the eye and to tell them that I want you to grow up and be like him, whoever that is in the White House. That's the standard that I want you all to hold Apoorva and I to when we're in that office as well. I think it's been a long time since we've had somebody who stands truly in the way they live their life and the values they stand for, for faith and patriotism and hard work and family. And while the left is feeding us race, gender, sexuality, climate, we'll call that wokeness, We've fallen into the trap of pointing out all the reasons why that vision is wrong. That's not good enough. We have to stand for the individual, the family, the nation, and God. Individual, family, nation, God, that beats race, gender, sexuality, and climate. If we have the courage to actually stand for something, we're not just running from something. We're running to something. And that's what we will revive in this country, not just through our policies, but through the example that we set.